Welcome to Design Sandwalk. I'm Michael Kuros and today we are in Lima, Peru, also known as City of the Kings. It has a unique climate and it's always cloudy but it never rains. Please come along as we dig deeper into Lima's cultural history. Lima is both the capital of Peru and the largest city in the nation. With its metropolitan population making up nearly one third of the country's residents. It is located in the valley of the Chilon, Rica, and Lurin rivers. Though the modern city was founded in the year 1535, its history dates back to the third century. Pre Columbian pyramids were built on the present city's site, and the valley was a stop along a pilgrimage route for ancient travelers. Established by Francisco Pizarro on January 18, 1535, the city was originally named Ciudad de los Reyes, or City of Kings, in honor of the Feast of the Holy Kings that took place that day. In the early years after its founding, the city saw severe infighting among the Spanish as well as attacks from South American natives' rebellion against the colonial rule. Despite this, the town thrived through its export of Peruvian silver. As time passed, the name Lima became more favored and in 1543, it was named the capital of the Viceroy of Peru. Throughout the 16th and 17th century, Lima flourished as a city. But a series of devastating earthquakes led to major reconstruction on multiple occasions. This destruction, combined with other port cities taking part of the new world market share, led to severe economic depression. During the 18th century, the city saw widespread modernization and construction of public buildings, including hospitals, schools, and churches. In 1821, Peru established its Declaration of Independence, and Lima became the new capital of the Peruvian Republic. After a brief occupation in the late 19th century, Lima began a major outward expansion, which unfortunately led to the development of large slums on the outskirts of town. In less than 40 years during the 20th century, the population went from 400,000 to 4.9 million, and by the year 2000 was close to 10 million, making Lima one of the largest cities in the Western Hemisphere. With close to 500 years of vibrant history, Lima is one of the world's most beautiful cities. After the break, we will be exploring some of the incredible structures that grace this vast city. Lima has a very interesting history, full of intrigue and unnecessary bloodshed over colonialists' greed for gold and silver. We'll be back with more of Lima after a short break. Stay tuned. Today we are with Miss Sherry Bagai from Sherry B Design and she's our in-house window and drapery specialist. So Miss Sherry, viewers had a question as why should they actually use window coverings in their home where they can have it free and open and everybody can, God knows, look in and they can look out. Could you explain? There are many reasons, obviously, but I'm going to give you six important reasons that why having window coverings in the house is beneficial to you. Number one is the style. You know, with adding window coverings, you can make a room look formal, informal, contemporary. You can definitely bring a style and a warmth to the room. Second one, probably, I think the most important would be privacy. We all want to have privacy inside the house, so honeycomb shades are perfect. They would let the light in, but nobody can see inside and outside. I think the third most important reason would be the light that comes through. If you don't have any window coverings, your wood floor can get faded, your area rugs can get affected by the lights. The next important one would be the energy cost. Yes. With the window covering, you can make the room 
cooler, warmer, and definitely helps you with keeping the cost of your electricity and gas low. Last but not least would be how much value it would add to your home. If you're thinking about selling your home, definitely the right window covering, window treatment, makes your home more elegant and more desirable. More representative, yeah. yes. I agree with all of them. And I highly recommend you if you're looking for window coverings, come see Sherry B at Santa Barbara Design Center and get the right and proper window covering and add to your home and make your life happier. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Let's talk about my favorite subject, rugs. Here at Rugs & More inside Santa Barbara Design Center, we pride ourselves in offering the finest selection of rugs. With any size, shape, and design imaginable, let us help you find the ideal rug for your home. We have a vast assortment of new and antique rugs. Whether you're looking for a touch-up modern or an heirloom that can be passed down for generations, you will find it here. Also, we offer expert repair and cleaning to bring your treasured family rugs back to life. Don't settle for poorly made internet rugs. Let's get real. They are made with harmful chemicals and they don't last. Our rugs are the best for less. And we always offer our 110% lowest price guarantee. And to save even more, come in during our rug sale and let our expert staff guide you to the perfect rug. Rugs and more inside Santa Barbara Design Center. 410 Olive Street. Today I would like to talk to you about rugs. Three important things to remember when you are buying a rug. First is the size. Size is very important and this is what you have to do your study. So if it's for a living room, I recommend to have the front legs of all the furniture to sit on the certain rug you're buying. So go measure it, make sure you have at least a foot extended beyond the front legs. If you can afford it, get a rug that encompasses all the furniture to be sitting on it. So usually for a living room, you're talking an 8x10, 9x12, a bigger living room, 10x14, and if you want something to sit on it, 12x15 or 12x18. Second, there is a style. It is very important that the style you pick matches the house you have. Check the room, is it a traditional house, is it a modern house, is it a transitional house? You pick the style matching your house and your living style. Lastly, and one of the most important steps is the type of rug you're gonna buy. I highly recommend you to do your study and see what type of rug is good for your situation. Most rugs I recommend are hand knotted. So these are the type of rugs that they're done by hand. They're mostly natural fibers. They don't have any chemicals. They don't have any machines involved making it. They're hand knotted and they get more valuable over the time. And they are very durable and long lasting. These are three things to remember when you're buying a rug. Thank you for joining us. My grandfather taught me about the beauty of the rugs. Each one tells a story. A story about the person who wove it, the person who bought it, the person who inherits it, the person who treasures it. It's amazing how simply looking at an object can bring you back to a different place and time or remind you of someone you love. At Santa Barbara Design Center, we want to help you find a rug that will travel through time with your family for generations to come. Visit us at 410 Oliver Street and find your treasure today. Welcome back to Design Santa Barbara as we look into Lima's history. A fun fact, did you know there are over 4,000 varieties of potato in Peru? Well, let's continue our journey exploring Lima. We will now explore the rich architecture of Lima, starting with the Peruvian government palace. Considered one of the finest examples of colonial architecture, this building serves as the seat of the government for the nation of Peru and is home of the president while in office. It includes formal spaces for hosting dignitaries and the Golden Hall, which was inspired by the Hall of Mirrors at the Palace of Versailles in France. The site of the government palace dates all the way back to Francisco Pizarro. 
but the current structure was mainly built in the 1920s with its last major upgrades taking place in the late 1930s. It is representative of the new Plateresque style, characteristic of Lima from the 1920s to the 1940s. The coat of arms of Pissarro is displayed on the main portico of the building. At Palacio Street, which was designed and built by the French architect Claude Antonio Sahut Laurent. Let's explore more of this incredible building. Next, let's visit the Archbishop's Palace of Lima, located on the land that Francisco Pizarro allocated to be the residence of the head priest of Lima after the foundation of the city in 1535. The current building was opened on December 8, 1924, and is considered a prime example of neo-colonial architecture that developed in Lima during the early 20th century. The Archbishop's Palace was built on the place of Limean Cabildo had occupied from 1535 to 1548, when that institution moved to its current location across the square. The building had six balconies of different styles and several entrances, displaying the Archdiocese coat of arms above the main gate. The architectural features of the courtyard were similar to those of several clusters in the city. The old palace facade was demolished in the late 19th century along the Sagrario. The remaining structure was demolished prior to the construction of the present Archbishop's Palace. The facade is made of Baroque elements and is completely made of reintegrated rock. Ornate cedar balconies are located over the main doors and the palace is finished by a granite sculpture of Saint Trubius of Mongrovejo, the patron protector of the archdiocese. The palace also consists of two flagpoles, one for the Peruvian flag and another for flag of the Vatican. The interior is equally ornate and in a unique connection to our beautiful community is home to a sculpture of Santa Barbara. The ceiling is illuminated by famous French stained glass windows allowing the entry of light. The interior also contains marble staircases with wooden handrails which allow access to the second story. Let's explore more of this beautiful location.
One of Lima's most distinct architectural details are its balconies. Mostly built during the colonial era, the balconies of Lima were built in the Renaissance, Baroque, Neoclassical, and New Baroque styles and had Mediterranean, Moorish, and Andalusian influences. The main features of the balconies are the lattice, steel, and balusters. The wooden balconies projecting at upper levels also allow for privacy and air circulation, an essential feature for buildings in warmer countries. Non-rounded balconies were introduced in Spain in the 18th century. Balconies of the 15th to 17th centuries are noted for their openness, while balconies built after that period are more closed. Sevillon azulejos and mosaics are used in the construction of the balconies. In the 18th century, viceroys would stand on the balconies to address the colonists. In churches, the balconies also provide abysses the chance to observe mass while avoiding being seen. The balconies merge the interior and exterior spaces of a city, a feature borrowed from the Islamic architecture. The balconies in Lima have been compared to streets in the sky and the function as a link between private homes and Limeno streets. In addition to these amazing structures, Lima's architectural wonders include the central post office, Palacio Municipal de Milaflores, Palacio de la Union, and its vast public cemetery. Let's look at more of this city's incredible architecture. It was an eye-opening journey in Lima learning about its turbulent past. Lima is an exciting and growing city with hopefully a prosperous future. I recommend you to visit its historic sites and enjoy the many offerings this city has for you. Looking forward to see you next week on Design Santa Barbara.
Today we are with Jess, the owner and creative director of Just LED at the Santa Barbara Design Center and he's a marvel of lighting. So I understand there is a new recess lighting that replaces the old clunky big ones, is more ergodynamic and you carry this. Can you explain to our viewers what this is all about and what kind of benefits they get out of it? Yes, Michael, so traditionally six inch and four inch has been the standard across America, the big clunky trims on the ceiling. You'll see them all over America. Since LED has come to another level on recess fixtures and as a designer, we like to see tight little go away trims that you don't see, they're up in the ceiling. So we have trims that are 3.5 inches that go, the light sits up in the ceiling so when you walk in it doesn't hit you in the face like the six and four inch traditional cans used to do. They also dim warm, so it's like the old traditional dimming, everyone loves LED dimming to the way halogens used to, it's called warm dim. So they dim down nice and warmly. So and it's all sat above the ceiling and it's all optical sending shafts of light through the room, creating a great mood in the room. Well, that's very nice, and I have seen it actually in your showroom. Come down here and see what he has to offer and make your house beautiful and warm. Thank you very much. No problem. Today I would like to talk to you about rugs. Three important things to remember when you are buying a rug. First is the size. Size is very important and this is what you have to do your study. So if it's for a living room, I recommend to have the front legs of all the furniture to sit on the certain rug you're buying. So go measure it. Make sure you have at least a foot extended beyond the front legs. If you can afford it, get a rug that encompasses all the furniture to be sitting on it. So usually for a living room, you're talking an 8x10, 9x12, a bigger living room, 10x14, and if you want something to sit on it, 12x15 or 12x18. Second, there is a style. It is very important that the style you pick matches the house you have. Check the room, is it a traditional house, is it a modern house, is it a transitional house? You pick the style matching your house and your living style. Lastly, and one of the most important steps is the type of rug you're gonna buy. I highly recommend you to do your study and see what type of rug is good for your situation. Most rugs I recommend are hand knotted. So these are the type of rugs that they're done by hand. They're mostly natural fibers. They don't have any chemicals. They don't have any machines involved making it. They're hand knotted and they get more valuable over the time. And they are very durable and long lasting. These are three things to remember when you're buying a rug. Thank you for joining us. Now I would like to share a Peruvian textile with you. It is a Lambayek. It was made in northern part of Peru. It is a group called Chimos that they made these and these are dancers. It's a burial piece. So when the head of the group, head of the tribe or a king used to die, they used to go to the they didn't think they're gonna die, so they just go into the next world and they took all their earthy positions with them because they're going to the next world and they wanna be prepared. So they took their uh, animals, they took their food, clothing, belongings, and they took their wives, they took their immediate family. So basically, they, if it was a king, you die, you take the queen with you and that is after you die, they kill the queen and their kids sometimes and they take this uh, ministers and they take the generals, they take them all with them. 
is a horrible custom, but that used to happen a couple of thousand years ago. So this is a burial piece and must have been somebody important, as you can see the figurines, and they call it Lombayek, it is a Chimo from North Peru. It's about uh, between 800 AD to 1200 AD, roughly a thousand years old. And this is a very fine needlework and back then they used materials that they used, it's very interesting, is basically the South American camels, which is llama, which is alpaca, and Vicunia. Vicunia was the smaller of them all and had the finest hair and I suspect this is Pecunia. And you see the colors, they are pretty astonishing that they still here and you see that color actually is a bug dye. And they squeezed the bug and they got that color and after a thousand years it still looks like it's fresh, was woven yesterday obviously has some damages and the reason this textile is staying in good shape is because Peru is dry to most part and very little rain occurs and it's a high elevation where this comes from and is bacteria doesn't set in it's very cold and that's how they have survived is they're dancing a traditional dance is a very interesting piece and somebody important took it with him to the next life. If you would like to see it, please come to Santa Barbara Design Center. It's hanging out here. Enjoy it and feel the age of it. Thank you again. See you next week on Design Santa Barbara.